Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to look at uh, peptide and proteins. So peptides, peptides are short chain of, um, of amino acid monomers linked together by peptide bond, which can be naturally synthesized or artificially manufactured. So that is to know that actually this peptide can be produced in a biological system and it can also be produced in the laboratory that is artificially. And here below, we have a structure of uh, peptides, which actually made of, of four different amino acids. And these four different amino acids are valine, uh, glycine, serine, and alanine. So it's a tetrapeptide because the number of amino acids are four. So we have four amino acids, and that is why it is considered as a tetrapeptide. And then what is a peptide? A peptide is also known as, as amide bond. We call it amide bond or amide linkage. And it's a chemical, it's a chemical or it's a covalent chemical bond that links two conjugative amino acid monomers along a peptide, along a peptide or a protein chain. So it means that for we to have a peptide or proteins, there must be a peptide bond. So a peptide bond is the types of the bonds that link the amino acids together. Like for example, how this peptide bond is formed. The peptide bonds are formed when carboxylic group of one amino acid linked with an amino group of another amino acid. And that is how we have a peptide bond. And this is a peptide bond. What we have here is a peptide bond. Oh, we call it an amide linkage. And how do we differentiate peptide and protein? So in peptide, we have uh, we have two to 50 amino acids. So whenever we see that we have two to 50 amino acids linked by a peptide bond, so we consider that molecule as a peptide. But when we have a peptide, when we have, when, when the peptide, is actually oh, when we have amino acids that are greater than 50 in a molecule, so that is considered as an as a protein, not a peptide. So a peptide is between 2 to 50 amino acids, and then for the proteins is greater than 50. And they must actually bind through a through a peptide bond. Okay. And then now we are also going to look at the proteins. What is a protein? A protein is a large biomolecule. Of course, it's large because the number of amino acids that are found in proteins are far higher or are much more greater than that that are found in actually the peptides. So you see, this is actually a polypeptide. In terms of a protein, we can have even more than two polypeptides. Two polypeptides or three polypeptides usually form the protein complex. It usually form the protein complex. Okay. So now we are also going to look at the chemical. We are going to look at the chemical structure of peptides and proteins. So in the case of chemical peptides of uh, peptides and proteins, we are going to look at uh, the number, the 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 the, the, the actually uh, structure of uh, peptides depend on the amino acids that are found. Like for example, now in this case, if we can see here clearly, uh, we have dipeptides, tripeptide, and tetrapeptides. So the chemical structure of peptide depend on the number of the amino acids. So you see, in the dipeptide, we have two amino acids, but one single peptide bond. But tripeptide, we have three amino acids, two peptide bond. Tetrapeptide, we have four uh, amino acids with three uh, peptide bond. And we also have pentapeptide, we have hexapeptide, that is six amino acids with five, uh, with, with five, peptide bonds and so on and so forth. And this is how it is. And then we have a polypeptide. A polypeptide is long, continuous, and unbranched peptide chain. Okay. Then now we are also going to look at the structure of uh, proteins. So you see here we look at the structure of peptide, but here we are going to look at the structure of 
proteins. So the structure of proteins are made of of, 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 uh, of four different levels. And the first level is uh, primary structure. And the uh, second level is secondary structure. We have tertiary structure and then quaternary structure. So in the case of the primary structure of amino acids, in the case of primary structure of a protein, it's just that we have exact, exact specification of it is amino or atomic composition and then the chemical bond connecting those atoms. It means that in this case, the primary structure of proteins is just exact ordering of amino acid forming their chain. So it's just a primary structure of the proteins. That is how the is based on the sequences of the amino acid, the sequences of the amino acid. That is one amino acid linked with another, like for example, methionine, phenylalanine, asparagine, arginine, alanine, leucine, valine. Look at it. It's just a it's, it's just it's just a linkage of the sequence of an amino acid. It's the exact sequences of proteins, and it's very very important as it determine the final uh, fold as well as the functions of the proteins. So the primary structure is just trying to tell us it's just about the sequences of amino acid. Like for example, if, if, let's say this is an amino acid, then the linked by a peptide bond. Here we have peptide bond here, then another amino acid linked like this, like this. So this is the primary structure. So in the case of primary structure, we have it like this. It will be linked, linked like this linear, linearly with just a peptide bond. And this primary structure of the amino acid is what determines the final put, the final folding, the final folding of the protein, as well as the functions of the protein. So the, 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 it, that is to me, that means that the functions of the protein depend on the arrangement of the amino acids in the primary structure that linked through a peptide bond. Okay, and then the secondary structure. So in the case of the secondary structure of uh, amino acids, the the proteins do not exist in just simple change of one peptide. It doesn't exist in that form. So. These uh, polypeptide chains usually fall to due to interaction between um, a mean and the carboxylic group of the peptide linked. And the structure refers, refers to the shape in which a long polypeptide chain can exist. So it means that in the secondary structure of amino acid, apart from the peptide bond, there are some additional bonding. There are some additional non-covalent non, non bonding. There are additional non-covalent bonds or non-covalent forces that linked and make these proteins to fall somehow, somehow, and get the secondary structure. And this non-covalent bonding is a hydrogen bonding. The example of it, we have hydrogen bonding, which actually gives the structure of the proteins. And there are we have only we have two examples of this secondary structure we have alpha helix alpha helix and beta plate beta plated sheets so that is in the case of uh, secondary structure of the amino acids and uh, however the segment of the protein chain might also acquire their own local point which is much more simpler and usually take place of a spiral an extended shelf or a loop these local folds are termed secondary uh, elements and form the protein's secondary structure. So, it, ladies and gentlemen, here we are actually to understand something which is very, very important. In the secondary structure, we have, apart from the peptide bonds, there is also hydrogen bond interaction. There is hydrogen bond interaction which makes it to fold and form the secondary structure. And examples of the secondary structure of the amino acid we have, sorry, of the proteins, we have alpha helix and beta related sheet. Although we are coming back to also talk about the alpha helix and beta related sheet. And then the next thing now that we are also going to look at is the tertiary structure of proteins. So in the case of the tertiary structure of the proteins, it's just a further folding, it's just a further folding, it's just a further folding of the secondary structure of the proteins. And this further folding is actually through a hydrogen bond 
electrostatic forces as well as disulfide linkage and van der Waals forces that stabilize this structure. So in the case of uh, tertiary structure, we have additional bonding that make the hydrogen bond as well as, sorry, that hydrogen bond electrostatic force that caused the sulfide linkage and the van der Waals forces is what actually did stabilize the tertiary structure of the protein. And uh, then for the quaternary structure is when we have so many, or when we have several protein molecules like polypeptides, and which usually also called a protein subunits. And these proteins are related to links themselves, links together to form a single protein complex. So you see from this diagram, we can see that we have one monomer, we have two monomer, and then we have three monomer. It means that we have two to three different subunits. And that's what make of the quaternary structure of the protein. But I think, ladies and gentlemen, I missed something off here. Uh, which is also, I think we also, we need to uh, look at it again. In the case of the secondary structure, actually, it's not about the, 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 the non-covalent forces. It's based on the interaction between a mean and the carboxylic group of the peptide linked. Remember in the peptide, in the peptide linked, there are, there are some free amino, there are some free amine and some free carboxylic group. So it's the linkage of this free amine and carboxylic group that form the secondary structure of the proteins. So thank you for listening. I'm also going to upload more of this video.